right? So we have seen in BFS and EFS that they are having some advantages and disadvantages also. Now we will see some more algorithm in this uninformed search strategy. Uh, as you have seen that uh, we have covered BFS and DFS in last class. Now uh, we will cover today some more algorithm in which uh, death first search, uh, we have seen what was the limitation of death first search. If you have not uh, cutting down depth, then it kind of some infinite searching in the depth, right? Because uh, there is no limit of depth you can implement on any tree. So depth first search cannot be uh, like complete. Uh, com completeness is what? Uh, if there is a solution, it, it, this algorithm has to give you one solution. So depth first search, if there is no cutoff for the depth, then um, this cannot be com complete. So we have a, another variant of depth first search. This is called depth limited search. So we will see the variation, extended version of depth first search, which is called depth limited search. So let's see how it works on uh, depth limited search. Uh, firstly, let's see why depth limited search comes into the picture because we are having disadvantage with DFS is what that if uh, 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 someone is Rajat has entered, okay. Disadvantage of DFS is what if we have picked the wrong branch uh, and which is up to like infinite kind of depth is there, then uh, when what is the meaning of wrong branch? <clears throat> that uh, with no branch that is having no solution in it, then it may not terminate. So, so this was the disadvantage of DFS. Uh, people are still coming. Okay, so what was the disadvantage of DFS? If wrong branch is expanded with no solution in it, then it may not terminate. So this is the disadvantage of DFS. Then what we do in depth limited search Depth limited search is a refined and extended version of the DFS algorithm. And what is the idea behind this? Here, the node at the depth limit will be treated as it has no successor nodes further. We just ignore those uh, childs of that particular depth limit node that we don't want to visit after that limit. So in this manner, we can cut off and can put in criteria that after this depth, we don't want to visit other nodes. So what is the idea of depth limited search? First one is introduce a depth limit on branches to be expanded. So firstly, we have to put the depth, uh, depth limit that beyond this, we don't want to visit. And second one is don't expand a branch below this depth. So this is the idea of depth limited search, pretty similar to uh, DFS. We have to do the same kind of things like using a stack, we have to visit in depth limited search, but uh, there is a uh, one more component you have to provide that is called depth limit. If that depth limit is raised, you have to, don't want, you don't have to visit the successor nodes further. So uh, this depth limit that search is useful when it is useful, when you already aware that what may be the maximum depth of the solution, at which maximum depth you can get the solution. So in that particular scenario, this can be useful because you don't have to visit successor nodes below that depth because you are aware that you have solution or your goal which you are searching that may can uh, have in under that depth limit only. So let's see how it works. Uh, what are the termination condition of depth limit search? First, and what you can think of how we can terminate this depth limited search. First one, either you get a solution, either you get a solution, right? Or second one, if you have reached the depth limit, right? If you reach the depth limit and you did not get the solution, then you also have to terminate then this is also the disadvantage of depth limited search. If your solution exists below your depth limit, then uh, you cannot reach to that solution because you have already put a depth limit that below that you are not going to visit. So some advantages are there and also disadvantages. So what is the termination condition? First one is a standard failure value. What we are denoting with the standard failure value, uh, this standard failure value uh, indicates that problem does not have any solution. This is the normal scenario that the goal does not exist in that particular problem which you are searching for. And second one is cutoff failure value. What is cutoff? Cutoff is what you have given the, as a depth limit. Like it defines no solution for the problem within a given depth limit. So what is cutoff failure value? 
it defines no solution for the problem within a given depth limit. So in this manner, this depth limited search can be terminated. Uh, what is the advantage of using depth limited search? As you can see that if uh, we are having some infinite kind of uh, depth in a particular tree, then we can go on and on. We have to store all those things into the memory. But if we have put some depth limit, means we are putting some constraint on that, then that is uh, can help you to save memory. So this is what depth limited search is, memory efficient. And what about disadvantage? pretty much uh, clear that it is incompleteness is the disadvantage of uh, depth limited search. Why? Because depth limited search algorithm is complete only if solution is above the depth limit. You get the solution only if your solution or goal is exist above the depth limit. If your solution or goal exist beyond the depth limit that you are not able to ever get that goal. So this is the issue with depth limited search. And it may also not be optimal if you are having more than one solution. Means you have more than one part to reach that solution, then it can also be not optimal. So let's have an example how it works. Uh, suppose uh, we have to traverse, like we are starting from A and then we have reached on the B second. A is on level zero and B is on level one, B, C on level one, and then below are level two and level three as you are aware. So A, then B, and then we have moved to child of B, that is D. And then what we have do, we have moved to E, that is the second child of B. Now, here you can see dotted lines below D and E. These are the childs of D and E, but we have put the depth limit to this level two only. So we don't want to visit beyond the level two. So we have not visited the child of D. And then we move on as per the depth first search algorithm, like using the stack, we are moving the, firstly we have visited D, then go on B, and then you are visiting the E, and then B. And then we will move on to C. So you can see here, we have firstly visited D, then E, and then B, and then C, and so on, and we will move to the A. So we have just cut off these, the subchilds, or the childs of D and E. So this is how we have to just put a one constraint that you don't want to visit beyond that depth. So this is how this depth limited search works. Now pretty simple one, because this is just an extended version of depth first search. But what was the drawback with depth first search? That, that can go on infinite search in the depth because if you, you are not putting any constraint on that. So you can get this solution here in depth limited search. And in this manner, it is memory efficient also. But what again, what is the issue with depth limited search? What is the disadvantage? That if you, know, you are just guessing that what may be the maximum depth and on you are putting on that constraint. If suppose your solution exists beyond that depth limit, then how will you will get that solution? So. This uh, depth limited search is your, can give you solution if that solution exists above the depth limit only. Now we will move on the next algorithm in this scenario of unlimited search, which is called uniform cost search. As the name suggests, we have involved another criteria, which is called cost. As we have seen that you know, we have studied in a graph algorithm called minimum spanning tree, in which we have seen that uh, in graph or tree, we are having some cost associated with it. And that cost can be anything like uh, your fare from one city to another city, or it may be a distance that you are covering from to go from one city to another city. Uh, yeah, until now, you have seen a so many examples in which we have not involved the cost. But this uniform cost search involves the cost, which is uh, pretty much different from BFS and DFS. Now let's see how this uniform cost search works. Okay, so uniform cost search is different from breadth first search and depth first search because here the cost comes into play. We, have, we are using another thing another component which is called cost 
and with this we have not seen this uh, cost in vfs and dfs now traversing in this uh, uniform cost search is what we have to looking for only uh, least cost means as you have seen that mean minimum cost is spanning three we are just uh, interested in cumulative cost which is least to reach the goal so this is the same thing in the uniform cost search also traversing via different edges may not have the same cost uh, this is the common thing but the goal is to to find a path where the cumulative sum is cost is least now it expands nodes according to their path from the root node a, a pretty straightforward thing that we have to just look at the path which were is minimum and we have to move in that direction only now it is implemented with the help of priority queue how we can use the priority queue to implement this uniform cost search because we can give the priority to lowest cost and in, put them into the priority queue and we can move on in that direction so it gives maximum priority to the lowest cumulative cost and in this manner we can move in that particular direction uniform cost search is equivalent to breadth first search algorithm when this can be similar to bfs when path cost of all the edges is the same then uniform cost search is equivalent to the breadth first search algorithm uh, this question uh, is asked in uh, i guess uh, gate examination i have seen somewhere that uh, in which scenario uniform cost search is equivalent to breadth first search algorithm so the, you have the option where the path cost of all the edges is same so and these are the things uh, you have to remember that in the context of uniform cost search so what are the advantage of using uniform cost search first one is completeness it is complete such as if there is a solution uniform cost search will find it out what is the definition of completeness if uh, there is a solution at least one solution will be provided by the algorithm so this completeness is the advantage of uniform cost search if it is complete and if the, it is complete because if there is a solution uniform cost search will find it out now it is optimal also uniform cost search is always optimal as it only select a path with the lowest path cost so in this manner this has the characteristics of optimal algorithm also and also we are having some disadvantage with uniform cost search what is the disadvantage uh, it does not care about how many types times you are searching on that like it does not care about the number of steps involved in searching and only concerned about the path cost so if you are concerned about the path cost and you are moving in any direction a number of time then what will happen we can stuck into an infinite loop so this is the issue with this advantage of uniform cost search because if suppose we are having the same path cost right moving in any direction then this issue can happen because we are we are always looking for a smallest cost excuse me <coughs> so what is uh, the advantage of uniform cost search first one is completeness second one is optimal in completeness what we have seen that if there is a solution uniform cost search will find it out and why it is optimal because it always chooses the lowest path cost and what is the disadvantage it does not care about the number of steps involved means uh, it it is ready to work uh, in in uh, like number of steps it can find it out to just look for the lowest cost due to which this algorithm may be stuck in an infinite loop so let's have an example let's we are having this tree and uh, we have provided some labeling of cost like from moving this s you can think about source and g is your goal uh, it is in uh, orange color now from this s to a what is the path cost this is 1 s to b this is 4 now a to c is 3 a to d is 2 c to e is 5 and e to g is also 5 and now from here we can see uh, I, this labeling uh, is missed here cost must be there uh, i will put it there and then from d to g is 3 and from b to g is 5 now from you have to start from source now you have to look for the minimum cost now you have to look for the minimum cost now from s to a you are get seeing that there is a minimum cost and what we will do we will move from s to a 
and in, you can see that it, one is the minimum cost to move from S to A. Now you have moved from S to A. Now then from A, we have to look for the smallest cost. That is either we can move from A to C or we can move from A to D. Now we will move from A to D. And so uh, in D also, uh, suppose here the from D to E, this is six. Uh, this is just mixed, uh, missed out. I will put it in it and then I will upload in Google Classroom. So from D to G, we are having three. Now we will move from D to G as in this manner. So this is how very pretty much simple uniform cost search that we have to look for only lowest cost and then we look for the cumulative cost. We, this is the one uh, traversing I, am, I have shown you in this manner, uh, how many if and words can be possible that all can paths will be calculated and you will look for the cumulative cost which is having the minimum cost. Like this from S to G, you can have the cost as three, two, one, that is six. So, uh, we are done with these things. Now this is some homework question or we can have some assignment on it. But this is some extra mile for you because this depth first iterative deepening search and bi-directional search, it will not cover in your syllabus, but it is good if you find out how it, these works because you don't have to look at the algorithm. You have to just find out how it works. What is the working of depth first iterative deepening? I'm giving you a little hint. In depth first iterative deepening, what we would do? We will use the characteristics of depth first search and breadth first search both. In this manner, we will overcome the disadvantages of both the things. And you can find out if you are having any difficulty to understanding the concept of depth first iterative deepening and bi-directional search, then let me know. I will have some extra class on that and we'll clear all your doubts. So I'm again revising. Today we are done with uniform cost search. So breadth first search, depth first search, depth first deepening, depth limited search, and this uniform cost search. These four algorithms are more than enough for this uniform uninformed search. So what is depth limited search? In depth limited search, to overcome the disadvantage of DFS, we have introduced the depth limit, which is in this manner, what we do, we just cut off the successor nodes of that depth limit node and what is the idea of DLS is it introduces a depth limit on branches to be expanded and it don't expand branch below the depth. So it is more useful when you when we are aware that what is the maximum depth in which we can get the solution. So what was the disadvantage of DFS? If we put choose a choose a wrong branch which is having no solution in it, then it may not terminate at all. We are moving in just depth infinitely. And you can think of depth limited search as an extended and a refined version of DFS algorithm. And how we are uh, remove those successor nodes here at the node at the depth limit, we will treat it as it has no successor nodes at all. So in this manner, we implement the depth limited search. And what are the termination condition? First one is standard failure value. And second one is cutoff failure value. What was the standard failure value means uh, there is a no solution at all. And what is cutoff failure? If solution exists, but below the depth limit. And what is the advantage of depth limit search? It is memory efficient. And disadvantage is as the working, you are aware that below depth limit search, depth limit, it is not going to search. So if a solution exists below that, that you will not reach in any way. So this is algorithm is incompleteness characteristics is having. So DLS search algorithm is complete only if the solution is above the depth limit. But in general, you can see that this cannot be happen because your solution may exist below the depth limit also. And it may not also be optimal because if we are having more than one solution for that particular problem. As we have seen that we can move from like a to B and then B to D, but before on this level two, that is D, we have put depth limit. So we are not moving beyond that level two. So from D, we have moved to E and then we will move to C. So this is the idea of depth limit search that we have to cut off the no successor nodes of depth limit nodes. 
And then we have seen the uniform cost search. It is uh, different from breadth first search and depth first search because we have involved a, a new component which is called cost. And this cost, you can think of any anything between that exists and can that can wait between uh, source to destination, and that may be like your cost or maybe a distance. And we, what is the logic in uniform cost search? Traversing via different edges might not have the same cost. The goal is to find the path where the cumulative cost of cost is least. So it expands nodes according to their path cost from the root node. And we can use the priority queue data structure. And how we can use priority queue? We can uh, give higher priority to least cost path. So uniform cost search is equivalent to BFS when this scenario will come, when the past cost of all the edges is the same. And then what is the advantage? Completeness, because it will give you solution. If there exists, optimal, because it always choose the lowest path cost. And what is the disadvantages? Uh, it does not care about number of steps involved, but just looking for the path cost that which one is minimum. So in this manner, it can be stuck in infinite loop also, and just with the issue with we are having with depth first search. Now, here you can see that we are having a graph and we have to pick the least cost. And you can think of not this one scenario, there may be a multiple path to reach to the goal and we have to choose what the cumulative cost, which is having the least price. So I have shown only one that from S to A you have moved and from A to D we have moved and from after A to D we have moved from D to G. So this is the one path is shown in this diagram. There may be n number of ways you can move to G in like uh, you can move in depth for search manner also on other things. There may be an, an multiple paths, but we have to look for the which cumulative cost of the path, which is having the least weightage. So this is how uniform cost search works. And this is a blind search, as you are aware. These are the algorithms you have seen. These are the uh, examples of uninformed cost search. Uninformed is blind search. So we are not aware if we are going to in the right direction or not. This is these are the examples of blind search only. So we uh, only four algorithms we have to look for in uninformed cost search. First one is BFS. DFS and then depth limited search and this UCS uniform cost search. These four these four algorithms are important for your examination perspective. And the rest two I have given you in the assignment. You can find out what is the logic behind uh, DFID and this bi-directional search. These are not important for your examination perspective, but for some extra reading, I am giving you to if you have some time, you can look at the concept of this DFID and bi-directional search. Um, what is the logic in this kind of search? So we are done with this uninformed cost search. In next class, we will discuss informed search strategies in which we, we have seen some these, these are the heuristic search in which we have some idea that which path is better and uh, which uh, in which direction we have to move. It means we have some uh, extra knowledge before and to move on towards the goal. So let's see how we can utilize that extra knowledge we are having in informed search as the name is very good that we are having information about how to reach towards the goal. So and that in informed search as this is obvious that they will be good than these blind search. So let's see how they take over uninformed search and in which scenario these informed search can perform better. So we are done with today's class. Okay. So I will upload today's class lecture note in Google Classroom.